The tunnel of Eupolinos or Eupolinian aqueduct in Greek, Eupolinian origma Eupolinian origma is a tunnel of 1,036 meters 3,399 feet length in Samos, Greece, built in the 6th century BC to serve as an aqueduct. The tunnel is the second known tunnel in history which was excavated from both ends ancient Greek, amphistomen translate. Amphistomen, having two openings, and the first with a geometry-based approach in doing so. Today it is a popular tourist attraction. Topic: <inaudible> Historical data. In the 6th century BC, Samos was ruled by the famous tyrant Polycrates. During his reign or according to the local guides before his reign, two groups working under the direction of the engineer Eupolinos from Megara dug a tunnel through Mount Castro to build an aqueduct to supply the ancient capital of Samos today called Pythagorean with fresh water. This was of the utmost defensive importance, because the aqueduct ran underground, it could not easily be found by an enemy, who might otherwise cut off the water supply. The Eupolinian aqueduct was used for hundreds of years as an aqueduct then later as a defensive shelter, as proved from archaeological findings. It was rediscovered in 1882-1884 and today is open to visitors. <laughs> Topic. Text of Herodotus The Eupolinian aqueduct is described by Herodotus Histories 3.60, without whom it might not have been discovered. I have dwelt longer upon the history of the Samians than I should otherwise have done, because they are responsible for three of the greatest building and engineering feats in the Greek world. The first is a tunnel nearly a mile long, eight feet wide and eight feet high, driven clean through the base of a hill 900 feet in height. The whole length of it carries a second cutting 30 feet deep and three broad, along which water from an abundant source is led through pipes into the town. This was the work of a Megarian named Eupolinus, son of Nostrophus. Topic. Description The tunnel took water from an inland spring, which was roofed over and thus concealed from enemies. A buried channel, with periodic inspection shafts, winds along the hillside to the northern tunnel mouth. A similar hidden channel, buried just below the surface of the ground, leads from the southern exit eastwards to the town of Pythagorean. In the mountain itself, the water used to flow in pipes in a separate channel several meters below the human access channel, connected to it by shafts or by a trench. The southern half of the tunnel was dug to larger dimensions than the northern half, which in places is just wide enough for one person to squeeze through and has a pointed roof of stone slabs to prevent rockfalls. The southern half, by contrast, benefits from being dug through a more stable rock stratum. Surveying techniques of the tunnel The north and south halves of the tunnel meet in the middle of the mountain at a dog leg, a technique to assure they did not miss each other. This method is documented by Herman J. Keenest and other researchers. In planning the dig, Eupolinos used now well known principles of geometry, codified by Euclid several centuries later. With a length of 1,036 meters 3,399 feet, the Eupolinian subterranean aqueduct is famous today as one of the masterpieces of ancient engineering. Eupolinos was aware that errors in measurement and staking could make him miss the meeting point of the two teams, either horizontally or vertically. He therefore employed the following techniques. In the horizontal plane The tunnel has a width of approximately 1.8 by 1.8 meters 5.9 by 5.9 feet. Eupolinos calculated the expected position of the meeting point in the mountain. Knowing that two parallel lines never meet, Eupolinos recognized that an error of more than 2 meters 6.6 .6 feet horizontally meant that the north and south tunnels would never meet. Therefore, he changed the direction of both tunnels, as shown in the picture one to the left and the other to the right, so that a crossing point would be guaranteed, even if the tunnels were previously parallel and far away. In the vertical plane Similarly, there was also a possibility of vertical deviations and, again, Eupolinos could not take a chance. He increased the possibility of the two tunnels meeting each other, by increasing the height of both tunnels. 
In the north tunnel he kept the floor horizontal and increased the height of the roof, while in the south tunnel he kept the roof horizontal and increased the height by changing the level of the floor. His precautions as to vertical deviation proved unnecessary, however, since measurements show that there was very little error. Keenest reports a vertical difference in the opening of the tunnels of only 4 cm Recent findings Recent research has shown that Eupolinos actually used three straight lines for his navigation. First he constructed a mountain line, over the mountain at the easiest part of the summit which gave a non-optimal position both for feeding water into the tunnel and for water delivery to the city. He connected a south line to the mountain line at the south side going straight into the mountain around which Eupolinos undulated the south tunnel. At the north side a north line is connected to the mountain line. This line guided the cut into the mountain from the north side. After 273 meters Eupolinos directed the tunnel to the west, obviously because of a combination of water, weak rock and mud. When leaving the north line Eupolinos used for navigating an equal-legged triangle with angles 22.5, 45 and 22.5 degrees in theory. Measuring errors occurred and were handled by Eupolinos within the accuracy he could obtain. The cutting of the south tunnel was stopped after 390 meters for the north tunnel to catch up. For the rendezvous of the two tunnels a tentacle was applied at the head of the south tunnel, giving 17 meters wider catching width. When the two tunnels reach within earshot, which can be estimated for this type of rock to approximate 12 meters, the tunnels are directed towards each other and meet at a nearly right angle. This took place almost under the summit, but that was coincidental. Eupolinos leveled around the mountain probably following a contour line but not necessary at the same level as the tunnel. He underestimated his measuring accuracy because, before the rendezvous, he raised the ceiling of the north tunnel by 2.5 meters and lowered the floor of the south tunnel by 0.6 meters, giving him a catching height of almost 5 meters. At the rendezvous, the closing error in altitude for the two tunnels was a few decimeters. Eupolinos used a unit of 20.59 meters for distance measurements and 7.5 degrees one twelfth of a right angle for setting out directions. Topic. References Topic. Literature Olson, Ake How Eupolinos Navigated His Way Through the Mountain An Empirical Approach to the Geometry of Eupolinos. Anatolia Antiqua, Institut Francais d'Etudes Anatoliennes. XX, 25-34. Burns, Alfred the Tunnel of Eupolinus and the Tunnel Problem of Hero of Alexandria. Isis. 62 172–185. doi. 10.1086, 350729. JSTOR 229240. Van der Weerden, B. L. Eupolinos and His Tunnel. Isis. 59 82 to 83 doi 10.1086 350338 jstor 227855 evans harry b 1999 review of hermann keenest die wasserleitung des eupolinos auf samos american journal of archaeology 103 1 149 to 150 Keenest, Hermann J. 1995. Die Wasserleitung des Eupolinos auf Samos, Samos 19. Bonn, Rudolf Habilt. ISBN 3-7749-2713-8. Archived from the original on 5 February 2012. Retrieved 17 November 2013. Goodfield, June, Toulmin, Stephen 1965. How was the tunnel of Eupolinus aligned? Isis. 56 1, 46 to 55. Doi 10.1086 349924. JSTOR 228457. Apostol, Tom M. 2004. The Tunnel of Samos. PDF. Engineering and Science 130-40. The Aqueduct of Eupolinos on Samos. Herman J. Keenest, Ministry of Culture Archaeological Receipts Fund, Athens, 2005. 
ISBN 960-214-424-6, pp. 9 euros minus 80. Topic. External links. Olson, Ake, 2012. How Eupolinos navigated his way through the mountain: An empirical approach to the geometry of Eupolinos. Dan Hughes, The Tunnel of Eupolinos. Michael Lahanas, The Eupolinos Tunnel of Samos. Tunnel of Eupolinos, Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Tom M. Apostol, The Tunnel of Samos.